How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf and uh, today I'm going to do a contract called Supply Recovery. Uh, I'm on the Crossroads map and uh, yeah, it's in the first set of contracts. It's a bit of a vague one because you can see in the top corner it just says something like find factory entrance or explore factory entrance. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, yes, and then it like once you, it, well you can click on the mission or contract sorry and go through it and then once you get there it says deliver uh, two lots of fuel two lots of chemical barrels and then two lots of metal beams which I was hoping would kind of appear in the general factory area once you get there and explore it so uh, I'm gonna travel over to the trailer store and then cut down kind of the rail tracks for most of it and then just cut across a bit of the countryside Um yeah it adds up to eight slots of cargo total which I didn't want to take an eight slot trailer because yeah they drive me mad <laughs> I've already tried moving one of those fan blades the other week and uh, yeah that was enough of a pain in the arse so I won't try and use uh, any more 8 slot trailers than I have to and in fact I did use one didn't I for a mission the other day with the P16 or P12 one of them either way slight regrets <laughs> got it kind of wedged trying to get around the uh, factory wall and all that but yeah because the missions pretty vague I just kind of wanted to take as much cargo room as I could and then kind of go from there so I ended up getting the Paystar, is it the 5600 Orseman? Whatever it is, the long one, um, with a three slot sideboard on it, which you don't usually get to take many of them out. And then, uh, yeah, I'm going to go to the trailer store and get a ramped flatbed, which is seven slots of cargo, but I've also got a crane on me. And uh, this is, well, not only it can have a three slot sideboard, but you can have the crane, the sideboard, and a trailer. So, again, in that sense, it's pretty nice. Um, yeah, so I just thought, worst case, I'll be able to pack all the cargo and then have one dangling off the crane or stack like it just on top of uh, one of the other pieces of cargo. And in theory, like I'm taking the goddamn horse with me because one thing I know with this um, Paystar, I think I can't see the size of the fuel tanks, it shrank the screen. I think it's 280 though, which not terrible, but this thing does drink fuel pretty quickly, so. Um, yeah, some kind of fuel plan is uh, probably worth sort of building into whatever way you're going to do it. As I'm heading to the trailer store now, when I get there, I can already uh, get a maintenance trailer and just like fill myself up from there, so at least I've got 280 fuel and all fully repaired and everything. Uh, typical apologies, there's a little tiny glitch there. I like it when I cross the ditches like that. You can tell though with this vehicle, it's got a lot of wheels to feed, so uh, for the most part it didn't really matter. Once you're in high gear it's motoring along nice enough considering this phase seems to slow stuff down a bit. Always look at them hay bales, like do, do they absorb the grass around them? Is that how they turn themselves into a hay bale? Everywhere they are there's like a giant bold patch. Um, yeah, the pace I yeah, it, it quite a lot of wheels to feed so every now and then it's worth jumping in the diff. But to be fair, it does cross those ditches pretty well. Obviously it's a longer vehicle, but still, I was kind of assuming that the wheels would still kind of go down the dip quite a lot, but once the uh, the front two wheels are over, I think it kind of skids on its chassis a little bit, and yeah, there's a few ditches across tonight that made it pretty easy. So I've done a bit of editing on this, because otherwise it would have been a bit of a... A bit of a long one, <laughs> again that's what she said. Um, yeah, got the ramp like bed, like I said, I just quickly got a maintenance trailer and fixed myself up and everything. And uh, yeah, I'm going to cut down the rail tracks just to make the, uh, the journey a little bit quicker. And yeah, all the places that you've got to del deliver this cargo to is pretty much like the train yard in the bottom left of the map, uh, the warehouse that's pretty nearby, I kind of unlocked the warehouse on it the other day with the Royal BM17 truck, uh, and then where the trailer store is as well, that's the last place you've got to drop the cargo off. But there is an aspect to this contract that, I don't know, is a little bit kind of like, meh, not too keen on that that aspect of it, I'll kind of wait till I get there to sort of explain it, but yeah, again the magic of editing helps a little bit and like I said, I'm hoping once I've done this mission 
uh, and then I can do this next mission that unlocks a warehouse and then I'm hoping that will have the various pieces of cargo I need that there's other contracts because like I say as I keep going through them even though there's plenty of contracts and missions on this game there's still loads of missions to be honest that I, I still need to go around the map and like just select them so they're actually on the list of stuff um, but yeah the contracts there even though there's plenty to do I kind of keep getting herded into doing like only get one or two I can do because the other ones are either I've not got the cargo yet or yeah or it's some kind of farming mission <laughs> which I've been pacing myself on those ones apparently though uh, you don't have to do the field on the institute map to do that there's a, a contract where you have to deliver 12 lots of potatoes so you're gonna have to farm six times in a row which yeah, is a bit excessive to say the least, but apparently, yeah, you don't have to do the in, uh, the institute map, so you can do like on crossroads or whatever, which is probably a bit of a better field, really. Even though I think every field I've farmed up to now has always got like telegraph poles or trees right at the edge of the field that are a pain in the ass to weave around. Uh, yeah, there's a bit of a, a yeah extreme bit of terrain going on there, but again, I like it. It's uh, it actually does make you kind of got to aim which way you're going through and try not to tip that to kill a tree on the way. It's a sacrifice that had to have been made. Of course I would have avoided it if at all possible. And to be fair, I even went out, I kind of forgot with the gearboxes, I just autopilot equipped this truck, but uh, with a high range gearbox, because the fact that I was able to get into high range most of this mission, it's uh, yeah, it was ploughing along pretty nicely, even on these roads that can be a little bit restrictive. And I still say they sort of are, but again, because I think this has got uh, so many tyres, once you've got the power going to all of them, it kind of keeps a pretty decent pace. And I've got the uh, a ramped flatbed, I've got a goddamn horse, which again, he's weightless unless he needs to be. Um, and the crane as well, so it's definitely like a fully packed truck really. So, you get here, it says stage completed, but then you only get like one option in the top, so now it says grab two lots of fuel. I was looking around with the camera, I can obviously see these, but I couldn't see any of the cargo, so yeah, it was a little bit disappointing. I mean, long story short, I'm going to grab these two lots of cargo and then I've got to go and deliver them. And then at that point, I was kind of hoping, like, okay, maybe where I drop these pieces of cargo off it'll then do the next pieces of cargo will appear there and I'll have to kind of do it in like a few dot to dot missions across the map but that wasn't the case so basically once I pack these I've got to go and drive them to the train yard or in fact no sorry these ones are past the train yard it's like the little warehouse um, and then it's going to say it wants me to come back over here to grab more cargo for some reason when I went to pack there it said something like my cargo capacity is exceeded and then now I only went to pack one piece of cargo, one was still hanging on the crane and yet it yoinked that off and packed both of them so god knows, <laughs> one minute it was a little bit uh, strict on letting me pack the stuff and the, the next minute it was relaxed as fuck so yeah, got a cut across, uh, that's the train yard, yeah, this warehouse I don't know what else to call it really, there's like a uh, a truck recovery square thing I can do on it now since I unlocked it and yeah, there's like the other cargo, uh, what was it, the chemical barrels are going to go to the train yard and then the metal beams to the uh, where I got the trailer from. Same yard anyway. But like I said, as of now, none of the other cargo is on the map, so... I mean, long story short, I didn't really need to bring like the uh, pay start really, like, uh, or necessarily the uh, the ramped flatbed. But obviously I didn't know at this point. That's one thing, it probably wouldn't matter so much, but because when I'm making a video it's like... It's nice to know how long roughly the video is going to be, how like... I can sort of gauge roughly how long it's going to take me to get the footage, uh, edit it, voice it, render it, upload it, etc. Uh, so I kind of... it helps to know roughly how much time it's going to take and all the rest of it. But yeah, this mission was a, a bit vague. And again, at this point, I was definitely using the train tracks to cut my way along. 
wouldn't quite, I thought I was about to smash into that train then it wasn't uh, and my wheels were like caught in the train tracks thankfully though, as long as I'm staying high gear it's ticking along pretty nicely but yeah there's plenty of other options really you could uh, bring as far as trucks go for this mission because well certainly for this first bit all you need is like any truck really, a two slot um, with a crane as well and in theory like when I got to that warehouse because I thought I'd be able to get all the cargo I was going to uh, just refuel myself from the loaf and then drop the loaf off and use like all the cargo space and everything but uh, the fact that it's only given me like little bits at a time I thought sod it, goddamn professional, you can come along with me for the journey well you can see I've already smashed my truck up a fair bit as well, I've already got half the suspension left and I fixed it at the where I got the trailer from so it took a, a little bit of a beating and yeah, this was one of the few times. Oh, apologies again. There's a little glitch there. I can't already have used my memory up. Um, there was only one or two places where it just wouldn't let me get out of first gear, so it was going a little bit slow for a while. Once you can just keep mashing L1, as soon as it pretty much says you're in second gear, as long as it doesn't instantly jump back down to first, you can pretty much bang it in high and it'll uh, start winding up to speed. But the main thing was. I don't really mind going that slow in first here and there, but it was just more that it's uh, nailing the fuel. But you can see, even along all these dirt roads, which are definitely more brutal than the usual ones, um, yeah, this vehicle's ticking along pretty nicely still. Even I have to say as well, there's a few times where I was leaning over quite a bit, and um, I was sort of close to tipping, but to its credit, I. I don't know, either they might have tweaked this a little bit, or maybe I just got a bit unlucky with it back in the day, but I always found it was a little bit more keen to tip normally. And I've not put anything, I believe I put the chain ties on, but there is actually two versions of chain ties you can put on this, and the other set has got like double wide rear tyres. It's got like, yeah, the dual rear tyres, but um, I believe the tyre itself is just a crapper tyre. I've not specifically used it on this, so... I suppose it's one of them, I can't specifically say. I remember using them on the Derry though. And uh, yeah, I've gone for like the mud version of the Chained, which always seemed to be pretty solid. The other ones, I'm not sure, they're either off-road or all-terrain version of Chained. And again, I just remember doing them um, with the big Derry, and it was quite a sort of obvious enough difference to where the, uh, the mud Chained were winning. And then yeah, on this mission, like the only part you'd need a trailer for really, would be the metal beams. But strictly speaking, you could actually like even if you had a two-slot sideboard trailer, you could pack one lot of metal beams in and actually pack them, and then kind of do what I do, where you could just load the other metal beams on top and then use the crane to pin it down. And it probably would make you a little bit top-heavy, so it might be worth getting a vehicle that yeah doesn't tip too easily. But other than that. Um, Certainly, if I'd known the way this mission was going to pan out and the way it sort of rations out the cargo to you and everything, then yeah, I could have run a bit of a different setup. But like I say, to be fair, I was pretty decently impressed with this uh, pay star tonight. It did the job. Just realise it's better to fly across the farmer's fields instead of <laughs> trying to cut across those giant mud patches on the road for no apparent reason. Again, though, not strictly knocking it. I appreciate the attempt to try and hold me up. Well, more importantly, I appreciate the attempt to try and hold me up and the fact that there is an exit strategy. <laughs> if you just pay a little bit of attention, which I rarely do, don't get me wrong, I'm one of the worst in this game for paying attention. Personally, I blame my cat. <laughs> he does turn up at inopportune moments. So uh, yeah, drop the two cargo off and I was kind of hoping, oh, maybe the warehouse there has got the next piece of cargo, but no. Scrolled over and it's like, God damn, sons of bitches. Um, yeah, two lots of chemical barrels over there. So, I'm going to edit like a, the middle chunk of this mission out because I've got to go back to that warehouse and then back to that train yard, which I've just driven through anyway when I was uh, delivering this bit of cargo. So, I'll drive back to the train yard, but yeah, just to save like doubling back doing pretty much the exact same footage three times over or whatever. So even there, like it 
some vehicles could definitely have flicked over by then. Again, it's been getting me a bit tonight with the, uh, the little glitches. They're only like a half second, second glitch, but... Ah, so that's where I took quite a fat bit of damage. I wasn't paying much attention now. Actually, funnily enough, it was because my cat turned up. <laughs> so I wasn't looking at the screen right now, hence I was just driving forward. Smashed... Uh, yeah, I thought I'd deleted most of my suspension there, but i just seen I kind of took some random hits of damage as I was driving across a perfectly smooth field. As is this game's tendency to do, and then now I wasn't really paying attention, flung it around, hit something, I don't know, a bench. Deleted the suspension, uh, fuel tank's not too healthy. Long story short, got the goddamn horse out, I mean, get yourself a loaf. Uh, yeah, fixed my suspension, fixed my fuel tank, and then on the way here I blew a tyre, so there was, at some point, I stopped with a little little horse, got it fixed. Um, yeah, now I'm back at the train yard, so dropped those two chemical barrels off, and again, looking around with the camera thinking, oh, maybe it'll uh, let two metal beams appear, but no. Now it wants me to go back to the same factory again for the, for the third time. And that's probably the only bit of this mission, just in general principle, that is kind of a bit of a crap idea. Again, if it sort of let me know at the beginning of the mission, so I could have taken the uh, appropriate setup, could have taken a more streamlined setup and all the rest of it. Um, yeah, or like, I don't know, just if all the cargo, I could pick it up at once. One, it would have been quite fun to just, yeah, get eight slots of cargo and try and get that along. Or you could do like a road train option, all sorts of stuff where, yeah, I'd have been even less impressed if I'd set off to do like a road train, got there. And then it's just going to uh, give me each stage of the contract one at a time. So at this point, it's not really impatient. Like I said, it wasn't like a terrible mission or anything. I was just thinking as far as like the video goes, it's just sort of a bit repetitive to just keep driving up and down the same... just going along the bottom of the map, really. Uh, the same road, kind of, three or four times. I'll say as well, to be fair, I don't know... I feel hesitant on saying it. Like, I don't like this ramped flatbed. It's definitely pretty safe to say it's my least favourite trailer in this game. Maybe the 8 slot is a contender, but that's just more because it's such a massive trailer that, it, yeah, going over bumps like this, it's an absolute nightmare. So this was the ditch, I remember. It kind of got over quite nice. The back end didn't really drop down too much. Um, yeah, so not a fan of this trailer, but considering I've kind of been in high gear for most of tonight and all the rest of it, it, uh, it didn't really tip on me or anything. And I have to say, the other day when I used it, it was also surprisingly relaxed and didn't punish the crap out of me. So, I don't know. Like I say, I'm hesitant to say they've fixed it because it doesn't seem to be in their nature to fix most things anyway, let alone... I don't know. I think they enjoy the idea of trollish trailers and all the rest of it. So, yeah. I don't, maybe I've just been getting lucky, but... This trailer uh, has been going pretty easy on me the last, this last week or so. Maybe it was like a birthday favour. <laughs> I get one week of a nice sane trailer and it's going to start ruining me again. It's just lulling me, luring me into a false sense of security. I'll wait till I'm on, on one of the fat missions without a crane. That's probably why. It knows I've got a crane, it knows I can save myself, it knows I've got a goddamn horse. Oh my god, another glitch. I think it does it more when my memory is getting fuller on the PlayStation, but I'm sure it wasn't that long ago. I'd cleared fucking loads of it. It's a pain as well, because like I say, I've got a 4 terabyte external hard drive or whatever it is, but just for some unknown reason, when you plug it into the PlayStation, you can format it, which I barely even know what all this shit means, but um, when I formatted it one way, I was able to save video footage to it, so then that kept my PlayStation memory mostly free, but then I couldn't view the videos on the PlayStation, so it saved them to it, but I couldn't get on them, so I, I, thus I couldn't edit them or anything like that. And then I had to format it a different way to where 
I now put all my games that are like, you know, you have to sort of load various parts of the game onto the PlayStation. I put all them onto the external hard drive, so I've now got the, well, it's supposed to be a terabyte of memory on the PS4, but it works out more like seven or 800 gigabytes. Uh, and then I can use that for video space, but yeah, one that gets used up pretty quick, really. And secondly, like I said, I've got, I don't know, three and a half terabytes of memory that's doing sod all, but yeah, it just, because it formats it, whatever the fuck all that means, <laughs> it gives you the different options to format it, and like I say, one, yeah, you can save them but not view them, and the other one, you can't save them to it, so, sod law. So I've got here now, the uh, metal beams are kind of at the back of the factory at the minute, so I'm just kind of looping around this way. Because, yeah, as much as this trailer has actually been being kind of nice to me, it's still a complete pain in the ass to reverse it, turn it around, and all the rest of it. I do remember as well, the turning circle's not the most amazing on this vehicle. Which, as it's quite a long vehicle, I kind of get it, but I think both the front tyres steer, though, so should be able to get a half-decent angle going on it. Probably needs a bit of rear steer. Needs to take a lesson from the loaf. Turn another housefly. Speaking of which, you can see, even though he's got a roof rack, he's looking pretty bold at the minute. I've used, uh, well, I've used all the roof rack fuel. I've used all the repairs to fix the suspension fuel tank on this thing. And I've used at least one of the tyres, maybe two. Um, but I did poach some fuel from a step pike that was at the train yard, so I have got a little bit of spare fuel in the loaf. He knows what he's doing. Uh, yeah, now, again, just to make it even worse, they put the cargo in, like, awkward sections where the crane can't really reach it unless you kind of smash your way into it. Yeah, that's what she said. Um, yeah, I was able to reach the metal beams, but I then tipped my trailer to the side, so... Long story short, a bit of editing going on, again, saves the day. But, um, yeah, disconnected the trailer. It's more because this thing's got a three-slot flatbed thing on it, or sideboard, or whatever. It's even longer for the crane to reach over, so I was kind of... I don't normally like to detach the trailer and do it all that way. It is more faffing around. Um, yeah, so this one got a zip up to the trailer store, so I'm kind of going to set off on the train tracks again, but pretty quickly swerve off to the right. And like I said, in total, really, that's kind of why I, uh, I edited most of the middle mission out, delivering the chemical barrels, because I was just flying up and down the, uh, the same rail tracks, really. So yeah, like I said, this is the only mission part of it, really, where I kind of needed the ramped flatbed. It's even there, unless I was getting lucky, which I can see getting lucky here and there, but in this game you don't tend to, like, if vehicles are tippy, it's going to bite you at some point. And uh, yeah, there's quite a few times I was sort of rallying over. Some pretty awkward bumps, and this thing stayed pretty, pretty level. So credit where it's due. It's not too bad. I'm sure it's around now somewhere along here. It was punishing me with the uh, the high gear, not letting me get back in it. It was keeping me in first. Oh yeah, and I get caught on something now, right? Is it just that? It doesn't look like I'm touching that tree stump. I was worried for a second because I thought, oh, has one gone under my chassis and it's like caught on my axles, but I don't think it was. And again, I was sort of looking around. You seen I just got snagged on something there, but then it kind of let me go and I was able to set off again. I'm not sure, but like I say, I didn't want to drive over a tree stump because if I had to reverse, that's when this trailer would still bite me. But yeah, I, I someone said the other week, and I agree that. The tree stumps, I'm sure some of them are invisible. Because whatever I caught then, the tree stumps you could see on screen didn't look like they were catching the side of my truck. And once I reversed up, I was definitely not near them. Right, that was probably the closest to tipping. I don't know if it would have, it was just more now the trailer hitch thing is kind of at an angle and it's not because it's not moving back because it's bogged down in the mud 
it's just sort of keeping me tipped over to the side, fired a winch out. Find another winch out, it's not really doing much. Going to a low range of the diffs on that was getting it to claw through the mud a little bit. Maybe it might be like the crane leg or something was catching in the mud a little bit. But again, to its credit, it didn't just try and flop over and uh, take the ramped flatbed with it, which would have been more of a pain in the arse because then I'd have to detach the trailer, get the crane out, load it all that way. And the, uh, the quit and reload method, it still has its perks, don't get me wrong, <laughs> I've still been using it here and there, but. Yeah, like I said, now it's sort of every 8 to 10 minutes it's saving, not every minute, so. Sometimes you can uh, quit and reload, and yeah, it'll load me back up at like that factory before I've even loaded the metal beams or something, so. Sometimes now it is actually worth just doing it. Doing it the old fashioned way, disconnect the trailer, load it all up. Again, apologies for the little glitches. Absolutely nailing me with them tonight. So at this point, I have... Um, oh yeah, when I was at the factory, sorry, I transferred the rest of the low fuel over to this paystar. So the fuel I've got now is kind of, that's it. Loaf. You saved every drop, but... Of, uh, yeah, pretty much used it, and you can see as well the suspension is not too far off being damaged, which that would be a pain in the ass because I think this vehicle is still moving that with uh, damaged suspension, but going across this sort of terrain it definitely wouldn't be letting me cruise along in high gear, I reckon. Trying to cut along the edge of the road, see them bloody tree stumps there though, definitely not going to catch them. Uh, yeah, back into high gear. At this point, knowing I can just about see, is it like on 33 litres a minute or something, this thing's drinking? So, uh, yeah, that fuel ain't gonna last long. I've kind of opted for, I was following the road for the most part, but kind of a direct route through the trees here. I could have swerved off to the left and connected up with the rail tracks. You can just sort of see off in the distance, but. I, uh, I've not been this way before, but I kind of could tell on the map that the tree line I've got to go through at least looks pretty thin, so there shouldn't be too much hassle. And again, yeah, it was kind of the quickest way. Bogging down a bit now, though. I wasn't too worried, as long as it keeps going at this pace, I should be fine. Just got to get to the other end of this field, connect up with the road, and then we're pretty much there. And yeah, thankfully there isn't much of a tree line here. I didn't actually have to like ram a tree down or anything, which is good, because at the speed I'm going, I think I'd just bounce off it. Finally let me get into the second gear. I think, yeah, nearly stalled, but went back into auto, back into high. We've got her. And now I knew it was all good. Could have just gone straight and bumped over that um, barrier, which I normally do like to test, to be fair. But, yeah, not today. <laughs> I'm not going to even bite myself by doing that. That's the kind of stuff I normally do. And then, yeah, I'll tip. I'll tip the trailer over, I'll run out of fuel, I'll delete the suspension, something will go horrifically wrong. And then I'll probably have to uh, utilise the quit and reload method anyway. And then yeah, fly around here, the turning circle's pretty crap so I didn't quite make it. Bit of a three point turn going on. So yeah, like I said, overall not a terrible mission. This vehicle was holding up pretty well as well, it uh, got the job done. I just, yeah, having to keep going back for each bit of cargo is... A bit of a pain in the ass, but if you know now, at least you know you can just take a smaller, more compact setup. Really, the only other pain in the ass is just the way the trailer stores here, not near the garage. So you got to head over here to grab a trailer, but then I have to come back here later to drop some stuff off. It'd be nice if there was a trailer store, just yeah, at the tra uh, at the garage, so we could sort of build the setup we want and set off from there. But uh, yeah, there's another one in the bag though, and in the end, I was able to just drive around here. Get the uh, sell the trailer back, which is rare. Normally they become free range trailers. Uh, get a maintenance trailer, fix myself back up, refuel myself, get the low full fully stacked. Well, fuel wise anyway. I don't know if it's a uh, roof racks uh, refilled, but there's another goddamn professional sitting there waiting, 
really fraction. But yeah, that's about it for today. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Thanks for my Patreon members. Get yourself a loaf because he's a goddamn beast and he saved the day once again. And I'll be back soon.